Uh, what are we doing, Jinji? What are we doing just now? No, over there with the tape. Oh, because this gate is on a timer. It closes. I had to record you because I know I got to renew my membership over here at Soulbox. Okay, that's what's up. So uh, you got me addicted, man. Good, 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 good. Sitting there jabbing the shit out of me earlier today, man. No, I was trying to get you to move that head off to the side so you're not a, you know, what happens to statues? What do birds do to statues? They, they shit, shit on them. them. You think Amir Khan's gonna be a statue tomorrow night? No, I think that he's gonna be <laughs> fast for the first few rounds, and then once Canelo goes to him a little bit, um, Canelo keeps getting better. His team keeps getting better. His defense keeps getting better. So, you know, like a lot of times we like to take the side of the underdog all the time, but Amir Khan is not really the underdog. I mean, That's right. he is and he isn't, but I think that. Um, the more I watch Canelo box, you know, I, I'm, I'm beginning to, you know, like him a little bit more. You, you, all these internet people are so negative when it comes to this stuff, and it just, it just, it's terrible. It's like if you look at some of these internet channels or some of these Facebook pages or some of these Instagram pages, like the words people use to describe these boxers who work hard is just. And maybe some of them are like angry rappers. They're funny place in public forums. You see it more and more and more. Like, oh, he's a cherry picker. These people are using a term that they really don't understand the history of it because a good manager does choose the right fights for his fighter. Right. You just don't go into the game fighting the best. You have to work your way up to that. And then when you do get to that elite level, there's so many politics involved. And the camp is always trying to protect his or her fighter by matching them up with the right people. You know, in the beginning of Muhammad Ali's career, when he, you know, when he turned pro as Cassius Clay, he didn't get it, he didn't fight Sonny Liston right away. Right. Um, when Mike Tyson was coming up, he didn't fight, you know, Larry Holmes right away or Michael Spinks. So, you know, Canelo's been fighting for, for a while now. Now, Amir Khan has fought some top name guys over the years, and he's had some problems with them in recent years. Virgil Hunter, his coach, which is Andre Ward's coach, is an exceptional trainer. He's probably one of the more knowledgeable men in the game on a technique level. That's who, that's who you remind me of, man. You, you speak calm, cool, collective, real technical like Virgil Hunter. Man. Well, you know what? If there was somebody that I would like to learn from, it would be a man like him. Like I was thinking the other day, I was watching him talk like, man, if I could go to Oakland and just say, Mr. Hunter, can you teach me? just 10% of what you know <laughs> so that I could become a better trainer. I would, I would, you know, if I had the ability to leave the gym and go study under him, he's probably someone who I would go study under. Right. And because he articulates, he's very calm and he connects with his fighters. Not that other coaches don't, but I relate to that kind of temperament, especially the older I get, the more mature I get. You know, to get in someone's head, it's not about screaming at them all the time. It's how you talk to them. So, well, Amir Khan said he's very, he's very transparent and very honest with Amir Khan when he uh, tells him how it is. Well, you know, when you have a fighter like Andre Ward, who you've trained since he was 12, and not to mention that his, his background, you know, um, you have a top-level elite athlete who, who has set the bar and the standard for any, everybody else. Right. So you're probably not going to get the same results out of everybody else, but do know that your system works because you took this guy from a youngster. Right. Hasn't lost a fight since he was 12 years old. Now, how do you see that fight happening? Amir Khan versus, this is your, this is your second prediction now. Well, yeah, and you know what? <laughs> the I Tim mean, Bradley and Pacquiao, that was, I, toy, that was a coin toss. I, it was a coin toss and I was completely off on that. And that was, you know, I made it more of an emotional than a... Than Let's a, get that average up now. Let's go. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be an exciting fight. I think that Amir Khan will come out in the first few rounds fast and furious. Ding, 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 ding. But I think Canelo will catch up to him. Canelo's on a roll. Um, I don't know why people think Canelo's slow. I don't think he's slow. I think he's getting better. I mean, I he's think quick. every he fought, fight, he's he quick. He fought Mosley, he's fought Cotto. 
because he's fought some fast fighters. Erzlandi Lara. I don't think Lara's faster than. Um, I mean, I don't think Khan's faster than Lara. As far no, as I don't think Khan's faster than Lara either. I don't think so either. And see, one of the best fights for Canelo, two of the best fights for Canelo, I think uh, he learned a lot on the defensive level was with Lara and Mayweather. He learned a lot. Right. And when he fought Cotto, I wanted Cotto to win. I wanted him to pull out the miracle, but. Canelo fought a brilliant fight, man, and he stuck and he moved and he didn't stay in one spot, so he was not the statue to get shitted on. Right. But Miguel Cotto knows how to box, so he was moving around him. But the punches that stopped the guy in his tracks, that set the man back a little bit, I mean, Canelo had the up on that. So I think that um, if Canelo connects with Amir Khan, right. it's going to be... Now, now, Hawkins said something nice. He said, look, it's a win-win situation. And, and the last several years, he wishes more fighters are like Amir Khan stepping up to be great, moving yeah, up to weight classes. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and not many fighters are doing that. Not many fighters and are doing that. And he's not stepping up and fighting a fluke. He's stepping up and fighting a top contender. And like Bernard Hopkins said, it is a win-win situation because I think too much has been made of people with unbeaten records. Right. Too much has been made of it. Like if that's the, if, 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 if you're going to measure a fighter all fighters greatness or their their level by how many fights they haven't lost then you got to look at who they're fighting and say well you know what so you know even even all these guys Sergey Kovalev Triple G these guys are destroyers man but you know they know a Bernard Hopkins in his prime or not even in his prime I say the Bernard Hopkins that fought Tito Trinidad would have handled Kovalev oh of course the, the Bernard, because Bernard was not supposed to beat Tito Trinidad, and he, then he TKO'd him. He took him out. Took him out. They said that fight was fixed, man. I don't think so. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think. How about when De La Hoya got taken out by a body shot from him? Well, uh, because Hop De La Hoya wasn't a natural, uh, uh, he wasn't a natural middleweight, but all that being said, you can be in the same weight class and the guy will knock you down with a body shot if he, if he times it properly. No, I see. That's how, I, that's my prediction. I think Canelo's going to go to body. He is going to go to the body because the Mexican brothers go downstairs all the time. <laughs> they Look, a knockout artist creates a knockout. Right. Tyson was a knockout artist. It didn't matter if it was 30 seconds or not. He created the opportunities. He just didn't walk in there and hit you. Right. He bobbed. He weaved. He went to the body. came up top to the chin. Come back over here. So the knockout artists are people who know how to create that situation. And all of the ones that are really... You know, um, knowledgeable with how the body works, they 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 work the body. Right. They work the body. They soften the guy up. Now Hopkins did say that Khan's going for greatness, but I know you said you wouldn't step into the ring. But for 13 mil, would you take Canelo on? Who me? <laughs> man, look, I'm 46 years old. Man. 13 mil? I would I would spar. He got, with, he's getting paid 13 million I would for spar that fight. With Bernard Hopkins to learn something for three rounds for. Three thousand dollars, okay? <laughs> I'm not even tripping off of that shit. Thirteen mil, man. He's young enough to be my son. I could be his father if I was redheaded in Mexican. I could be his dad. You know what I mean? So, That's the good thing about getting to a certain age. Is like you know where you're at with shit. And right, you know, right. You know what, man? I'm 46. Being able to be here. I see. I, that's what I was gonna say. Your your soul boxing club is it's it's filling up, man. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's what what I'm trying to do is offer a an alternative to you've got extremes you've got the fitnessy cardio you know gyms which don't teach you much but they can get you in excellent shape then you've got the really hardcore old school boxing gyms out in Hialeah or in the south south miami where the average person might go in and be a little intimidated so what i'm trying to do is create an environment where there's no one's intimidated no one's judged and you can learn freely now i'm going to be on kids who step like you know and <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to get your feet right, man. That's all it is, you know, like... No, I, I, was some, a kid earlier. <laughs> I saw somebody else do that on TV, yeah, but this is not TV, so... I'm just trying to offer an alternative. There you go. I'm, my, my heart is in teaching, but if your heart is in teaching, your heart's got to really be in learning. So, I watch fights, I listen to, to trainers, and, you know, to bring it back full circle. Um, I was talking to an old coach who came by the day and I said one of the things that I really like about Canelo and that I respect about his team is that they've been together since day one. And that's hard to find now. Right. And they've grown together. And a lot of times a rock star, which is what Canelo is, 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 is destined to be, he already is, they start to lose their humility. And you can hear it, no matter what language they speak, they just start talking shit. Um, Canelo's trainers say, 
we are learning together. Every fight we grow together, we get better. And that's a nice thing to see, that level of loyalty. Yes. You know, some fighters have to go to different camps because they've outgrown a certain situation. But with the Canelo thing, you know, they took him pro at 15 years old. And